Hello friends. Today I've been asked to discuss uh, some of the initial decisions that I make when I'm going to do a painting and I'm delighted at this question because I'm a really big believer in decision making. Um, used to do a lot of plein air painting but now I tend to paint inside from photos and this gives me the opportunity to spend time thinking about my picture, what I want it to be like, how big it'll be, what colors I'll use, all those kinds of things. So, um, and given that I work from photos, and a lot of you do too, the important thing is to make sure that you are uh, using your photos as references and not treating them like the Bible. So what are the decisions that we have to make? Let's assume we've chosen a photo, we've uh, decided whether it's going to be a vertical or horizontal, we've done any necessary cropping, now what? Okay, I may have printed it out or I might be looking at it on my iPad. Here are the initial decisions that I make. The first is what shape and size will it be? The second, uh, which is determined by that, is what surface and technique am I going to use? What are the compositional challenges? And uh, what studies am I going to do? Color. Where am I going to go with the color? And last but not least, the mood. What is it I want to say about the picture? So let's start out by thinking about the shapes and sizes of, uh, that are possible. I work in standard sizes, which are um, predetermined and uh, once we have a standard, there are standard sizes for which you can um, put a painting in a plein air frame, which is a big advantage. So here's an 11 by 14. I purchase pre-mounted boards from Dakota Pastels. Uh, here's a uh, 11 by 14, 12 by 16. The standard sizes that I work in are from basically 11 by 14 to 20 by 24. And these, unless you're working with an absolute square, these sizes are proportional, but they are, tend to be narrower or a little wider. Okay, so the ones that are a little narrower are the 9 by 12, 12 by 16, 18 by 24, and you can go up. Uh, the, little, the wider ones are the 11 by 14, the 16 by 20, and the 20 by 24. So when I'm thinking about uh, whether I want the narrower or the wider, what is the determining factor, the subject matter? Will it fit? Will it be crammed in? What's going to accommodate my subject matter more um, comfortably? The narrower size, the wider size. And now, so that's the shape. And now there's the size. And when we're thinking about size, um, What's important here? The subject matter. Is it an intimate subject, such as a bird sitting on a rock, or is it a really big, bold, important subject that really, you know, needs needs a bigger surface? Let's take a look at a couple of pictures that I uh, happen to have here. This is the one you've seen recently for the uh, last demo. So this is a picture from Chincoteague. It's a tree. It's a very quiet picture. There's not a lot of energy or uh, action going on here. It's a very quiet, contemplative picture. Um, this size is perfect for this. If I had a bigger one, I'd have a lot more of that foreground, and I'd have a lot more of that sky. So this 11 by 14 uh, format is just perfect for this. However, let's look at a very different picture. Here's my painting of uh, one of the major waterfalls at Great Falls during the winter. This is a very dramatic subject. Um, it's on the 18 by 24, so it's a little narrower than the 20 by 24. It just fits perfectly, but the size, it, it's, it's a big dramatic subject. If I had done that as a 12 by 9, it would not have the same impact at all. Okay. 
So the subject matter, again, is really key to making these decisions. All right. Once I've decided on the uh, size and shape, then I have to think about, well, what surface am I going to use? And then the surface will determine the technique. So the first question I have to think about is, well, what surfaces do I have? I've already purchased some surfaces. Um, I have my, my, currently my favorite surfaces are the UART uh, 320, this is the 320 grit, which comes in this nice beige color. I really like this. The other surface that I use is uh, Pastel Premier Italian Clay, and I buy this in sheets that are 20 by 26, and I can cut them down to size. Now, um, you'll notice that there's a difference there. One, this is what I call a toned surface. They both are toned, but the UART is a really light toned surface. This is what I call a medium toned surface. So if I'm working on a surface like this, I really can't do an underpainting. Okay, underpaintings are really one of the most important aspects of working in pastel, and I'll be doing future demos on that. But in my book, Finding Your Style in Pastel, I talk about two different um, applications, two different techniques of working. The first is to work on a tone surface like this, where we'd start with a drawing, and then we'd work with pastel on top of the drawing, and probably working from hard to soft. The second is the application of a wet underpainting. And if I'm working on a surface like this, I'll be doing a wet underpainting. And I would probably use hard pastels, alcohol, but I could use watercolor, there are various ways of doing a wet underpainting, and of course we'll be talking about that later. Um, again, the subject makes uh, the subject matter, though, in addition to the surface, the subject matter also determines the kind of technique that you're going to use. As a landscape painter, I really like using underpainting, so I would say that 90% of my paintings are done with an underpainting. However, when I recently did two portraits, I chose to use the Pastel Premier because I did not want to do an underpainting for a portrait. The drawing was really key. So if the drawing is really important and you don't want to lose it, then you don't want to do an underpainting. So these are all, all decisions you have to think about, okay? All those things you have to think about. All right, down to the all-important composition. So, okay, I've got a, I've got a pretty good uh, subject that I have printed out, but no composition, no photo is ever going to be perfect. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to look at this photo and you're going to say, well, do I have a center of interest? Is there something, one area here that's really important? Or do I just have a kind of a nice flow of shapes? Something I could call a big shape picture. And if, you know, this is important to think about so that you can um, decide on the technique you're going to use. But maybe even more important is what, is, what needs changing in this composition? Is there an area that you want to diminish? Is there something you want to take out? Is there something that you might want to move? Um, what can you change and what can't you change? Know your own uh, abilities as to what you can handle and what you can't. I find the, um, the most important thing for me is to begin, always begin, with a compositional sketch. I do this in proportion to the painting I'm going to be doing. I usually do this with different graphite pencils so that it becomes my value sketch at the same time. And I find that when I'm drawing, I invariably um, improve on the photo. Here's the photo. It's kind of boring, really. But by doing the drawing 
I was able to really think about the areas of interest here, make a little more out of them, and I'm finding I really like my drawing better than I like the photo. And hopefully, when I go to do the painting, it'll even be better. I haven't discussed color, but probably that's one of the first things I think about when I'm looking at this photo. Am I going to use this color? Oh, it's kind of blah. Maybe I'll have to push the color. Maybe I'll make it a little more interesting. But one of the things I like to do is just print out a photo in black and white and use intuitive color. Sometimes I do that. However, when I was working on a portrait, I was using an observed color approach because, well, you kind of want the skin and hair colors to be what they are. And if I'm going to do an underpainting, I have to think about the colors of the underpainting. So that's color. Mood. Well, the mood is kind of where we start out, actually. You know, you think about, think about the picture of Great Falls. Not as calm as this picture here. This is a quiet, calm, contemplative picture. This is anything but. So the size, the strokes that I've used, the colors, everything are going to be different in these two pictures because these pictures have completely different moods to them. So mood is probably where we start when we think about the surface texture, the color, the size of the painting, how you're going to approach it. Everything is going to relate to that mood. Okay, so I'm going to uh, give you a sneak preview of my upcoming painting, which is this one, of Wyoming. And I'm going to be using a brand new surface. I'm really excited. I've ordered some of the new Lux archival paper from Dakota Pastels, which is going to arrive in a couple of days, I hope. And I decided that this is a good 16 by 20 shape. I want it to, I don't want it to be real narrow. I thought about I thought about a 12 by 16 and I actually did a drawing of that and I decided it was too cramped. So the 16 by 20 is just perfect. And um, but the 20 by 24 would be too big. It's just not interesting enough for 20 by 24. So that's that's the perfect size. Um, the color, well that I'm working on this new surface. It's so light, it's really soft, the mood is very quiet. Uh, this is a, a surface that takes watercolor applications without um, uh, warping, I've been told. So I might even think about doing a watercolor underpainting. I might think about that. Uh, so that would, that would be different from doing a regular uh, hard pastel underpainting. So I'm, I'm thinking about the, the, that application. Um, I know what the mood is going to be. It's going to be quiet. Um, but those, those are some of the things I'm thinking about as far as this painting goes. I don't know if you can see in this photograph, but there is a little car here. We'll talk about the composition. There's a little car. It's a little red car. Well, I'm going to take that red car up in there. Because we do not, this painting, what, what, we have a subject of interest. It's this tree against this mountain back here. And these darks and, and the, uh, everything is leading back into this area. So this is my area of interest. That car here would be a real distraction. It doesn't add anything to this picture. So that's easy to take out. So this is a relatively straightforward picture, but it's kind of a boring picture. So I'm going to have to make it more interesting as I'm painting it. But I'm really looking forward to trying a new surface. So, this is, this is what's, uh, this is probably the most important part of any painting you do. I haven't picked up a single pastel stick. I haven't done anything but a drawing yet, but I've been thinking about all of these things and where I want to go with this painting. So do it yourself. I really, um, I really encourage you to do the drawing, and when you're doing the drawing, think about where you're going with the painting. Take the time. It'll be worth it. Thanks a lot. Stay well. See you next time.